On Saturday morning, I got a Facebook message from a woman named Ashley who encouraged me to come down to the Heinz History Center. She wrote, you don't want to miss the Pittsburgh Vintage Mixer. Well, I had been to one of these vintage mixers before over at the new Hazlitt Theater on the north side, and I liked it a lot. So I hightailed it down to the strip. And before I got inside, I met people coming out with cool stuff. What made you buy this? I needed something for the mantle, and I liked it. It's science. Like, that is beautiful. <laughs> that is cool. So I was ready to get inside and on, found buddy. out all the cool stuff was up on the fifth floor. A big room of sort of antiques and amazing junk. Lots of smart and sassy shoppers, too. I got a Seven Springs mug for two dollars and it's from 1978. I'm gonna get a tie. Yeah, which one? The striped one here. I'm not sure it goes with my polo. <laughs> I'm trying to get him to get a sitting tie for a while, so this will work. Yeah. <laughs> I've got about two bags packed full of stuff, and uh, I had a budget, but the budget is out the window, so. Monster bag. I bought got this crazy retro mushroom tray. That's psychedelic. Yes, it is, but that's about as far as we made it. And I got this button. I have to show you this button. It's so good. <laughs> You could pin it on your sweater, or your jacket, or your tote bag, or your backpack, or your scarf, or your hat, or anything. <laughs> there was no question. It was a browser's paradise. Sort of a creme de la flea market. Not any really junky stuff, just lots of mostly recent classic merchandise. Presented by some very savvy sellers. I have a problem where I would go around vintage shopping and... <laughs> I would buy things that didn't exactly fit me because I just didn't want them to waste away in whatever Goodwill or wherever I found them. So I would just collect them and they would sit in my closet unworn for years. We are selling mid-century mod, uh, fun, kind of kitsch stuff. And so I decided that I would start selling them and maybe make back some of the money and actually shop for a good reason instead of just selfishly for myself. So that's really how it started and it's just a hobby for me. I have a full-time job and I just kind of do it for fun. So. We like our stuff to be clean, um, mid-priced, uh, nothing too over-exaggeratedly priced, um, and just fun. Stuff that we love ourselves that we, you know, can't ha keep in our house because we have too much of it. So, that's what we sell. <laughs> this usually hangs out in our basement or our attics for the uh, entirety of the year, and then we pull it out for these shows. We don't have a shop, but we uh, sell stuff online and do these shows and flea markets. Oh, the vast array of stuff can be overwhelming. And then you see something that you once had. Yes, I used to own exactly this model of typewriter. Maybe it's still in my basement. I'm rediscovering all this stuff and the fact that it's lasted for so long I think is incredible. It, it speaks to the quality, it speaks to uh, how good it was made and how chic it is and how stylish. The fact that it's survived for so long and people are still buying it. Especially people my age, we love this stuff more than we love the stuff that's made nowadays. Because the stuff that I buy last year from the store in the mall doesn't make the season. And this stuff has been around for decades, and so I think that really speaks to how great these things are, and I love it so much. You know, I also got to meet Ashley, who sent me the message that morning on Facebook. We started this because every Saturday and Sunday we get up early, and we, since we were kids, we just collected everything. And then eventually, your garage, your attic, all of your shelves are full, so this disease turns into a, a little side business, so... We're hooked. Well, I went with a resolution to not buy anything. But then I saw these two little businessmen stand-ups. They're bankers. On the back, they're marked Union National Bank of Pittsburgh, 1955. <laughs> they were two for five dollars. I had to get them. This is Pittsburgh. I mean, you have all these people here. You make items, a lot of them. I, we were saying that this is... We have local pr produce here. <laughs> When we go out and collect our stuff, the estate sales and auctions at flea markets, it's all within an hour of Pittsburgh, so everything has a story, and that's the best part about it. Yeah, it's fun to have it in your house, but to think about who owns it and the story behind each item, that's what keeps you coming back. 
Well, I was impressed, and I'm sad that it only happens once a year. But I'll go back to the Pittsburgh Vintage Mixer again. Although, I'm seriously thinking about gathering some stuff from my house and going as a vendor.